Guys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, oh my God, I have finally finished my video course. I'm really excited about this. I've put like a ridiculous amount of love, of time, of effort into this. I've basically been doing this every single hour, it feels like, for the last two months. This has been my full-time project. So here is a free chapter that I'm giving out that is on winner's mindset, feeling happier, the map of consciousness, getting more done. If you want to be one of the first people to get the full video course, what I'm going to do is you can just email me and I will give you the video course and the book that comes with it. And then you can just pay me whatever value you felt like it gave you. If you've only got a little bit of money, $1, even that's fine. So pay whatever you think it's worth, whatever amount you can afford. So if you're interested in that, send me an email and I will send it to you probably within the next week. Let's get straight to it. The map of consciousness, the hierarchy of emotions. The map of consciousness, which I've shown on the left, is an explanation or a guide to the main emotions that we feel as humans. In a way, you can sort of think of it as a hierarchy. The map was developed by David Hawkins over his many years as a clinical psychologist and spiritual teacher. At the top of the map is love, joy, excitement, the positive emotions. And towards the bottom of the map is fear, guilt, anger, apathy, shame, what you might call the negative emotions. The higher up emotions on this map empower us, they motivate us, and they make us feel amazing. The lower emotions can restrict us, they can hold us back, slow us down, and make it harder to reach our goals and harder to be happy. I don't think I have to try very hard to convince you that love, joy, and peace feel better than guilt, shame, fear, and anger. The person who's filled with a deep sense of joy for life and excitement towards their goals gets so much more done than the person who feels shame, apathy, fear, and guilt. You can try this exercise. Think about a time in your life when you felt apathy or sadness or a feeling of complete hopelessness. When you felt like that, did you want to work on your goals? Were you energetic and pumped up, ready to achieve big things? Or did you kind of just want to procrastinate, self-medicating with your vices and time-wasting activities in an effort to try and just make yourself feel not quite so shitty? Now try thinking about a time in your life when you felt so excited, so happy, so full of life. Did you want to sit around feeling sad and self-medicating? Probably not, right? You probably felt a zest for life and a strong desire to kick some ass. So the more time we can spend in those higher level emotions, the more we get done, the more effortless our actions are, and the happier we feel doing it. The lower down emotions on this map tend to imprison us. We get so clouded by guilt, shame, fear, anger, that we can't even think straight. We're not logical, we're not rational, we're not happy, and we're not effective. But when we're feeling joy and excitement, thinking is easy. Working on goals feels much more effortless. We can even get into a flow state and things kind of just happen. It's like magic. Famous psychologist Carl Jung called this synchronicity. Solutions just come to us. Taking action towards our goals becomes a breeze. We're happier, which makes other people want to be around us, which in turn makes us even happier. Dedicating myself to rising up the map of consciousness has been a fast track to success, happiness, and fulfillment for me. Focusing on winning and focusing on what we want helps us move up the map of consciousness. But focusing on what might go wrong, or obsessing about what we don't want, or stressing about, but what if I make the wrong decision, can pull us down into fear and the other lower level emotions, where it's harder to make decisions that empower us. Everything in this course essentially is here to help you move up the map of consciousness and feel more of those higher level empowering emotions. Hell, that's the point or maybe the side effect of all of my content and most self-improvement content in general. It's there to empower you, to move you up the map, 
to enable you to feel more love, more peace, more joy, and more happiness. You got into self-improvement because you wanted to be happier. And sitting in the lower level emotions, in other words, focusing on things like, but what if I fail? That also just introduces another problem that we feel like we need to solve. Because when we feel bad or when we feel crappy, we often self-medicate and turn to our vices. So now our self-medicating gets in the way of us taking action. We often feel like, great, now I have to overcome my self-medicating or my vice or my addiction before I can even think about working on my actual goal. And in doing so, we've inserted an extra step, which is, oh, I need to fix my self-medicating. But if we instead focus on winning and we feel those more positive, higher-up emotions, we are far less likely to procrastinate or waste time or self-medicate or have vices or addictions. We're too busy winning to need that stuff. Self-medication and addiction loses a lot of its appeal. As for how to move up the map and how to feel those higher level emotions, there are a billion different ways to feel those higher level emotions. And a lot of my content focuses on these techniques. I've found that reading books and consuming content from people who are higher up on the map has helped me the most. Reading Byron Katie, David Hawkins, books like You Can't Afford the Luxury of a Negative Thought, and many more. And one step further than that, the more time I spend around people who are higher up in those higher level emotions, the higher I rise up myself. Just being around positive people raises you up. Their positivity is infectious and it rubs off on you. You kind of get it by osmosis. I've also found meditation really helpful. Just sitting and being still with my thoughts, in other words, just noticing my thoughts, rather than trying to stop them or control them or judging them or thinking I shouldn't have any thoughts at all. I just notice my thoughts and I have a curiosity with them. I say, isn't that interesting? I'm thinking this or I'm feeling this. This has also really helped me move up on the map. Just noticing, just being aware, just sitting with my thoughts and being okay. Music, particularly positive and uplifting music, has helped me feel more of those high level emotions. A few artists and songs that I really love, classical music, piano music, yoga music, meditation music. Every song by the artist Hiatus. I also love Ulrich Schnauss. Tycho. Ilo. Yippa. I also enjoy fun songs that uplift me and make me feel good, like Float On by Modest Mouse, Love Sick by Nujabis, and Go by Valley Lodge. I'm just glad to be here, happy to feel that. And it don't matter if you're by my side. I'm satisfied. Well, it's all. But 
at the end of the day, play whatever music makes you feel good. Mirror therapy also helps me move up the map. In other words, I say I love you to myself in the mirror every day. And it took me a little while to get good at this. At the start, I felt very awkward. I felt very uncomfortable. It was very intimidating and very weird. But over time, as I just said it to myself once a day, every single day, eventually it started to make me feel a lot of that self-love that I think a lot of us are chasing. And it helped me move up into those higher level emotions. It also helped me let go of a lot of the need for validation that I had. Why do I need somebody else to love me if I already love myself? It gave me a lot more of that outcome independence and I could be okay with people not liking me or somebody letting me down or somebody not wanting to spend time with me because, hey, I like spending time with me. It's okay if you don't. I'm okay by myself. On top of this, the exercise that I call 50 things that are likable about myself has really helped. And this is an exercise that I give to all of my coaching clients. I will get them to sit down and write a list of 50 things about themselves that are likable. And if you struggle with this, if you can't come up with 50, that's okay. Just take your time. You have the rest of your life to think of 50 things that are likable about yourself. Gratitude is also a really, really, really great way of moving up the map and feeling those higher level emotions. I practice gratitude multiple times a day, reflecting on just a few things that I'm grateful for. I also like to tell other people that I'm grateful for them too. Watching uplifting YouTube videos and movies has also really helped me. I like the channel The Dodo on YouTube. It's a channel all about cute, adorable animals. I always feel so happy and peaceful after watching. Having a mission or a purpose that's bigger than me has also really helped and helping other people with their mission and their purpose. I find when I step outside of myself and focus on helping other people, I feel amazing in return. Spending time with people that I care about, like friends and family, has also really helped me. And having accountability partners and sharing our journeys together also helps. As I said, focusing on other people, helping them, caring about them, serving them, mentoring them, and loving them has really helped. Focusing on helping someone else helps me get out of my own head, and it helps me feel more connected with others and the rest of the world in general. Expressing love towards all of life's creations in all of its various forms. Loving what is. Accepting reality instead of arguing with it. Being present. In other words, being happy to be right here in this very moment, instead of wishing that I was somewhere else or had more money or a better body or anything else that might distract me from the present. Noticing the inherent beauty in the world. Sometimes just doing nothing at all and just existing. And the biggest of all, all of David Hawkins' content, particularly the books Letting Go and The Map of Consciousness Explained. And there are plenty of other things that I've done to help myself feel those higher emotions. Find whatever works for you. With all of this stuff, I try not to beat myself up anytime I do spend a little bit of time in those lower level emotions. I've noticed that those emotions are not bad. We don't need to judge them. In fact, I often say, your emotions are trying to tell you something. They exist for a reason. They serve a purpose. If I'm feeling fear, what is this fear trying to tell me? Is there something I can learn from this? Is there something I've overlooked? Is there some useful information that I could use? If I'm angry, what is this anger trying to tell me? Is there something that I've been bottling up that I can start working on and processing instead? If I'm sad, why am I sad? Is it because there's something in my life that I'm not happy with? How can I change that thing? How can I improve things? If I'm feeling guilt or I'm feeling ashamed of something, is there something that I can do to make amends or can I let go of some of that guilt and shame? So none of this talk about the map of consciousness is about judging our emotions or saying, God damn it, I'm supposed to feel peace and love and joy all of the time. Why the hell am I angry right now? Crap, I'm doing it wrong. There is no doing it right or doing it wrong. We're just noticing our emotions, we're listening to them, we're learning from them, and then we're gradually taking some baby steps towards moving a little higher up on the map to some of those nice higher up emotions. The higher level emotions are certainly more helpful, they're more peaceful, 
But that doesn't mean that other emotions are wrong or bad, or that you have to bottle them up or suppress them and become some sort of cold, emotionless robot. And it also doesn't mean if somebody else is feeling some of those lower level emotions that they're bad or stupid or that we should judge them. Again, emotions serve a purpose. And wherever you currently are on the map of consciousness, that's fucking beautiful. All I ever do is aim to just be 1% more peaceful or more loving or more happy, and I just slowly improve over time. I'm not aiming for massive leaps or huge changes, though sometimes that does happen too. I'm mostly just aiming for tiny little improvements, a little bit at a time. Baby steps. Progress not perfection. And we're all on this ride towards our best selves. We're all in this journey together. Joy, love, peace, happiness, these emotions empower us. Fear, anger, shame, guilt, these emotions can distract us. Aim to gradually rise up the map a little at a time progress, not perfection. But wherever you currently are on the map, you're doing great. Keep it up. Hope you guys and girls found that useful. If you would like the full video course, like I said, you can just shoot me an email. I'll give you the video course and the book and you can just donate whatever amount that you have or whatever amount you want to pay for it. Shoot me an email. I'll leave a link like in the description below where you can email me. Enjoy the rest of your day. And as always, go out there and crush those goals.